Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Karo Hono no Kokuin episode number 5 and 6 reactions. Okay, uh, the previous two episodes, episode number 3, um, we had uh, uh, a Mado ring. We got to know about a Mado ring which is, you know, which has the horror Zaruba within it. Um, it was something that always like, you know, like helped uh, Garo the Makai Knight and um, we were on our way to actually get that for ourselves for Leon uh, but there was like there's like a thing uh, like, like a little inconvenience in that on that way was that uh, Marcelo the son of the priest who was like you know like kind of preparing the Mado Ring he got controlled by a horror because you know he had this uh, what do you call it this um jealousy or like you know this possessiveness towards the mother ring because he was well, like you know he always thought that yeah i'll be using this because he himself was also a makai knight so using that as an opportunity one of the horrors actually got into him and he killed the priest and then like you know like there was like a fight emma also got involved in that whole battle but by the end of it um we were able to defeat him and take zaruba like you know as our own um leon stopped getting like you know kind of over like in what do you call it like losing control of himself just like we saw in the previous episodes because he made the contract with zaruba and after this i'm guessing zaruba will help uh in that regard help him in that regard so yeah that was that whole episode um yeah and the ep episode number four uh we we go to a village a place where there is um uh, that like you know people are doing this like witch hunt people are sacrificing other people and uh, there is like this uh, little kid her mom living there and uh, the kid uh, started acting weird after his dad died like you know there's like a doll with, with him and people are missing from the village and the villagers are still doing the whole sacrifice thing and like you know there was like a huge secret which we got to know later on that the villagers actually Kill the dad like you know because the dad did not want like you know wanted to go and tell everything well like you know uh, to the um um tell everything like you know confess everything to the authorities uh and that's why the kid suspected that and he was trying to plot revenge and again another again like the same thing the same theme comes up revenge you know um uh, the horror was actually inside the doll and that's how like when we can see like a parallel which was drawn here because previously we see leon kind of going trying to like you know like his dad saying him like don't go through the path of revenge and here leon kind of repeats that to um to the kid and that don't go towards the path of revenge which really shows that yeah like horrors are something that takes uh advantage of people's emotional instability so yeah like so by the end of it uh everything kind of like you know works out well like stuff happens and but by the end of it like you know everyone gets their deserved punishment and the kid and the mom leaves the village and the main person who was like you know the the village chief he gets what he deserved but the tradition keep kept going on and the cycle continued like now more people are going to like you know uh sacrifice even other people who are living this until and unless i guess they run out of people so yeah that was the episode uh, numbers uh four so yeah let's start episode number five this is garo hono no kokuin so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Um, Alphonse, someone came and helped him. Someone came and helped him. Some uh, other Makai knight. I completely forgot about this part. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this guy. Damn, look at him just. Hmm.
Oh yeah. Oh wait, he okay. Obviously, it makes sense. He doesn't know about the horrors. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. 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 That's how he's doing that. Um. <clears throat> okay, so Oh damn. What? Oh okay. Oh, I thought you just redact him or something. <laughs> Aware of your destiny. Hmm. Laid go. Oh. Okay. So he knew Garo. Like the previous Garo. Okay, so I'm guessing the red, yeah, there you go. So the red uh, Makai Knight is this guy. Okay, like I, I don't know, I thought like, you know, like I kind of mentioned in, this in one of the previous episodes. I was like, I wonder who, like, you know, who's Makai, uh, like, you know, the armor is Alphonse going to inherit? I thought like, okay, maybe it will be like, hmm. Airmans, but now that I know like you know like this only goes in uh, What do you call it like you know it can only be passed between blood relatives, so it's impossible No, wait Okay, let me know the Makai armor can only be inherited by blood relatives or you know your successor your children or can it be inherited by someone outside your like, you know, family tree. I don't know. Let me know. Because, like, if that is the case, that it can only be inherited within blood relatives, who, who is, um, like, you know, Alfonso going to inherit? Whose Makai uh, suit is going to he inherit? Because I thought he was going to inherit these guys, but I don't think they are blood related, so... Anyways, I'm sure. Okay. Gaia. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. Great. Is he dreaming or? Yeah, he's dreaming. Uh. So are you. <laughs> uh. Oh boy. <laughs> um Damn, okay. Wait, what's happening? Is he being bothered by the sunlight? New moon. Oh, okay. Okay, so life energy or something like that. Yeah. Oh. What is he wearing? Oh my god. It's like a loincloth. <laughs> right, here he is. Oh, this is the... Hmm.
Oh, that's what's happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. As well as the descendants. Oh, that's what who he is. The Knight of Light. That blood also learned in the hands. Okay. Wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, there you go. My question got answered. Don't know which who got executed for cursing the kid. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, Anna, yeah. Oh, Wait, um, he said like he has the same blood. Is, is he like Leon's brother or something? Oh, wait. Oh my god, Esmer... Esmeralda, there you go. Okay, yeah. Cousins. What's down the golden armor to her bloodline? Wait, so did Esmeralda know that the one who was being burnt is her sister? She was also present there. She knew nothing of the horrors of or her own birth. Okay, there you go. She knew nothing. She knew nothing. Their father and myself. Okay. Okay, makes sense. Hmm. So what about him? Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's see how strong you are. Not enough, boy. <laughs> Need more training. Oh. Okay, he at least grabbed it. Not bad. <laughs> Humans, okay. Oh, well, that won't do. Yeah. But before that, you need to get stronger. Yeah. Um. What? Telling him to hold that? Oh God! 
<laughs> ah, oh my god. Um, yeah, you need to boost your strength parameters. Just like grabbing it like this, like. Ah. Uh. All right, 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups, and 100 squats. Let's go. <laughs> uh. Okay. All right, so I'll talk about this later, like something that's bothering me. Poisoning her, her, him. Yep, Mendoza's here. Dietration. Okay, yeah. Yeah, she didn't know anything. Like, that's what he said. Oh, uh, well, they're going to use her as a bargaining chip. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. 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 That's why he had to. Okay. Hmm. Oh. Oh, oh man. Hmm. Oh. Okay, this doesn't look like a yeah. Okay, whoa. <laughs> yeah, they, they were like, what the hell is happening? Damn. Hmm. What? Love of me. Oh, wait, is he like a horror now? Oh. Okay, well, what the, what is that? Oh! Okay, it's too dark to see what's happening.
Oh, is he a horror or not? Ah, uh, he's horror. There you go. Oh, he's like, yeah, I don't need it. <laughs> Oof. Damn. What is this? This hideout or something? Oh. Whoa. Okay, what the? That's the horror. What is it like a fish? Um, who the hell is this? Wh why is she here? Oh damn. Yeah, take. Wait. Wait. Okay, I'm confused. Why was he sitting there like that? Oh my god! Okay, there he is. Okay. Okay, there you go. The armor. Defense. Oh. Oh, so his name is Gaia. Okay. <clears throat> Wait, what is um Erman's uh Makai Armor's name? Like Gado is a golden armor. This is Gaia. Wow. Yep, that's the strength. Okay, what are they doing here? I'm guessing probably came here to buy something. Oh, is that her husband? The one who was eaten. Anyways. All right. What? Oh, this is the whole thing that's happening to him, consuming his life. A day of your life. Oh, one day. All time slingers. Oh. Oh, interesting. Oh, who is this? Is this his grandfather in front of him?
Oh. <laughs> yep. Wait, who is this? What? Oh. Hmm. Yeah, that was his grandfather, most probably. <laughs> All right. okay all right um we got a big information in this episode uh that is the like you know the not the past but where she where uh alfonso what who is her mom uh his mom and you know his ancestors who they are and all those stuff so now there's one thing that i'm kind of thinking now like like the armors are passed on from one person to another who are related by blood that's why leon's grandfather's garo uh, makai armor got transferred from him to leon because they're related by blood what about alphonse like um he obviously cannot inherit What's his name? Ermans. Ermans armor because they even though they are kind of family if you think about it like that, but they're not blood related. You know? Like So and this guy, this um Raphael, he is a friend of theirs. So he's also not blood related to him. So these two armors he won't be able to inherit, I'm guessing. So who is he? going to inherit the Makai armor from I'm wondering now now this kind of makes um what can I say like makes me think about something else you know since Erman has a Makai armor that would mean that uh, he inherited that Makai armor from someone that means his family as well is the inheritor of a Makai armor so yeah like Like I'm thinking, like, so, so who is um uh, like you know uh, Ermans Makai armor going to go to? Like um, Leon already has a Makai armor. Now I'm thinking um, <laughs> like this is a big um guess, but um since <laughs> since we know how Leon is not Leon sorry Erman is. I'm thinking maybe in the future episodes we're going to know that he has like some legitimate child or something who's like Leon's brother and maybe that person is going to inherit the Makayama because otherwise it it like how who is he going to in, uh, like you know in, like make uh, what do you call it pass on the Makayama too because his son already has one so I'm guessing in the future probably <laughs> we're going to get to know like yeah he like you know leon has like some other brother or something and he never knew and that person is going to inherit the armor that his dad has you know and i don't even know what happens when like you know like when you are unable to pass on your makai armor it just just like does that makai armor vanish completely from the world or it does it get randomized and pass on to some random people on the earth or something like is that how it goes so yeah i'm wondering <laughs> this is a big guess that i'm making you know but i feel like in the future maybe like since we already know, know erman's personality i'm guessing he, we're probably going to get to know in the future that like yeah he has some illegitimate illegitimate child or something 
and that person like you know will get his armor so <laughs> or maybe who knows like you know maybe like the armor is not going to get passed on either of it so <laughs> Yeah, but I'm thinking about Alphonse. How, who, whose armor is he going to inherit? And what is going to happen to Raphael's armor? You know, like um, because he, like, I don't know if he has some children or something. Like, you know, maybe he has a child or something. So maybe that person is going to inherit. So, anyways, um, yeah, like. Uh, or maybe there is some additional rules like i'm saying like yeah like it is only passed on to blood relatives and we already saw that like they themselves mentioned it pretty clearly that it's passed on through blood so but maybe there are some exceptional rules over here like what happens in the case that you are unable to pass on your makai armor because you don't have a child what's going to happen then maybe there's like an additional rule there and we still don't know maybe we're going to get to know in the future episodes but yeah <laughs> anyways okay this episode um <clears throat> so first of all uh this guy Raphael, he comes and helps um alphonse out and alphonse asks him for help like we see like alphonse never didn't even know about horrors makes so much sense because i doubt the king knew anything about horrors neither did the mom know that is the queen so yeah so that means like you know like he also was unaware of everything that's happening here so like suddenly seeing these people like these people becoming horrors he was confused so Raphael says like oh this is what is happening these are horrors and we are makai knights we like, you know we uh, like we we fight them we defeat them and you know like these things are passed on by blood this and that he kind of gives him the you know required information <clears throat> Okay, we shift to the um, other scene where Leon gets up. He's like, oh, let's get go out and do some work. And he's like, you know, he falls down. He gets uh, unconscious because this is the day of the new moon. And Zaruba is going to consume his life today. And okay, um, then we go back to Raphael and Alphonse. Here he starts telling him about the different um like you know the past the history of the makai knights he says that in, in previous like you know years we like you know people knew that um the people who fight horrors are makai knights and they are you know they have these special powers but nowadays <coughs> most of the people have no idea and that's why makai knights since they have these special powers and they fight horrors they are being labeled as witches and are being burnt or like you know killed uh, arrested that's what's happening and since we as makai knights or makai alchemists cannot you know like uh, be violent towards human beings it's like a one-way thing going on like we are only getting captured we can't fight back and that's it so that's basically what's happening so the best way to actually get like you know, out of this situation is not letting anyone know that yeah i'm a makai knight because if you let someone know you can you won't be able to fight back and they're going to like you know just attack you one like you know from one side so yeah you need to like you know hide your identity that's the best way you can counteract this situation which is definitely pretty difficult you know um but yeah that's the only way now he tells some more things uh about uh like you know he tells about mendoza all that stuff and how like you know the makai armor gets uh passed on from one person to another through like you know through the blood and now here he says that like this blood also is in your like you know run is running through your veins and then he okay then he starts talking about the past that we kind of got a little flashback about the whole thing about anna you know dying and, and on, on the stake and uh airman coming in and saving uh, leon at that moment taking him you know with him and he says like anna was like you know the daughter of the previous um uh, garo so, so now like so okay so this is what it is you know he tells he's telling everything to uh alphonse so 
the previous Garo, that is Leon's grandfather, he had two daughters, Anna and Esmeralda. Esmeralda was adopted by someone else, while Anna became a Makai alchemist, I'm guessing. Um, Esmeralda knew nothing about even like because probably because she was so small, she didn't even know that she was like you know a descendant of the previous Garo, and she thought like yeah she she just thought like she knew knew nothing about her actual father, and that's why she had no idea about horrors nothing. You know she was all, like all in the like you know she she knew not nothing. She was just like the normal citizens, and. <clears throat> She somehow became the queen uh, and gave birth to Alphonse. So that obviously means like the blood is obviously flowing in Alphonse. So Alphonse is also a Makai knight, has the potential of becoming. Uh, while Leon has already inherited um, the Makai armor from the grandfather. So yeah, that's how this is going. And his grandfather's, that is the previous Garo's friend, was Raphael, who is also another Makai um, uh, knight, who has uh, like you know, Gaia with him. Now, here's another thing is happening. Like, there's another Makai knight who is involved in this, who is um, Ehrman, who is the father of Leon. So, it's like a big, big family tree. What the? <laughs> okay, so that's what's happening here. Fairly simple, uh, but now I am thinking, like, like who whose armor is going to Leon? Uh, not Leon, sorry, Alphonse inherit. I'm wondering because I'm pretty sure he is somehow way or the other he is going to become a Makai knight, but how? That's the question. Um, uh, we'll probably have to wait and we'll get to know. So, okay, that's basically what's happening, and he tells everything to. Alphonse, Alphonse like, yeah, I knew nothing about this. And he's like, okay, I also want to become a Makai knight and fight. I need to save my mom and dad uh, and our kingdom as well. <clears throat> and uh, Raphael kind of tests him and he's like, nah, you need more training to do. You know, come with me. And uh, when you become sufficient, like, you know, be, 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 become capable enough, like, you know, then you can become a Makai knight. Okay, in the other place, Mendoza is up to no good again. He's like, oh, like, you know, like, and still slipping poison to the king. Um, and he asks, I forgot the girl's name again. Anyways, the red-haired girl. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, so he asks her that, oh, did the queen say anything? And she's like, nah, nothing. Like, obviously, it makes sense. Like, the queen doesn't know anything. What is she even going to say? So... Yeah, and he's like, okay, like keep her alive because we can use her as a bargaining chip to get back to uh, Alphonse. All right, and then Alphonse and Raphael go to um this guy. Uh, what's his name? I can't find his name anymore. Count Romero, no, Baldona of Count Romero. Yeah, that guy. Whatever. They go to him and there's like stuff happening. He's like a horror now, as he says, like, you know, he was a lover of music and arts, uh, like, but he nowadays, he's not a human anymore. And we go in this weird underground place. Now, this part kind of confused me. Like, who was that guy who was just sitting there like with the, um, wait, yeah, like just sitting there. Like, string, like in that instrument, you playing the instrument. I thought it was that guy. It was the horror at first. I thought he was the one. But then, like, we see, like, another, like, you know, monster thing, which was obviously the horror, and who is that count, I'm guessing. And there's, like, this random kid and, uh, like, you know, a woman. Like, okay, so I'm guessing. Okay, you know what? I think I understood what happened. Um, so most probably he, like, you know, like, so... What he does is like since he's like a patron of arts and everything, I'm guessing like people from nobility or like you know these type of people come here to buy stuff from him, and that's where he takes advantage of them and kills them and eats them. I'm guessing since he's a horror, 
and probably something like that happened probably this uh, this was like a family this guy was the father i'm guessing the the lady was the mother and there's like a child with them and um that's how they got them and now i i don't know why the the guy was just sitting on the that place and just like you know playing that instrument like and just like there's like a huge monster beside him and he wasn't even paying attention like what the hell was that i don't know but anyways i think that's basically what happened now he like you know like they fight start fighting um rafael is involved with someone else like fighting some other battle while <clears throat> this guy um alphonse he tries to fight the horror but unfortunately you know like he cannot do it like it makes sense obviously because this is a horror and he's just a normal person um the horror eats the guy and uh, Raf uh, Alphonse saves the lady and the child. Raphael comes in, uh, wears his armor, Gaia, that's what it is called, and fights and defeats the horror. And that's how he, like, you know, like now Alphonse can see like how much strong they need, he needs to get before he's able to use <clears throat> the Makai armor. All right, so now, okay, now here's another interesting part. This last portion is kind of interesting. Um, we see Leon getting transported into a weird space. Um, okay, here's that part. Um, okay. <clears throat> Under the contract of the new moon, a day of your life was swallowed by Zaruba. Okay, wait, one thing I need to check. New moon. How how many days does it take for a new, new moon? Uh, well, exactly how many days? 29, 30 days, uh, like 29 or 30 days. So that's how much time it takes to complete one uh, cycle ah uh, okay uh, once a month all right so okay once a month that means one day of um leon's life is going to be swallowed by zaruba which is pretty less i have to say does make sense okay so that means in one year 12 days okay yeah like it's quite low it is quite low like so uh in 10 years it'll be like 120 days his life is going to get con consumed yeah very low very low amount like you know like for, like for, i'm guessing like for uh like to complete one year it'll like take 30 or 35 uh years like for one year worth of his life it's going to take 35 or 40 years so yeah that's very less so like probably like if, if he was like if leon was going to uh, live for 80 years you know and then die naturally he'll probably live for 78 years that's what's going to happen i'm guessing um correct me if i'm wrong that's how i i'm understanding this okay and now he's like in this weird space and there's like the grandfather i'm guessing that was the grandfather the previous garo he's saying that this is where the swallowed time lingers um where time lingers question mark past present and future Time does not separate here. Okay, this really makes sense so much because as he says, like all the time lingers here. All the previous contractors of Zaruba's time also lingers here, I'm guessing. And that's why since like, you know, this place probably contains um, his grandfather's time as well, because I'm pretty sure his grandfather was also uh, contracted to Zaruba. And I'm guessing like every new moon, his life was also consumed. That's why in this space, like, you know, Leon comes in and Leon is meeting his grandfather because his time is also like, you know, lingering over here and the past, present and the future, like everything. <clears throat> so, okay. Uh, yeah, that's probably what's happening here. <clears throat> okay. So. Okay. And then he like, you know, tells him about like, you know, like trying to like, you know, uh, do not fear your flame. Um, who is it you must protect? All that stuff his grandfather tells him and he wakes up he sees that he is on his way to what was the name of the place santa Bart. yeah santa Bart. and uh, yeah that is what happened okay so 
yeah that was episode number five yeah uh let's start episode number six of garo hono no kokuin so all right <clears throat> just a sec okay so i'll be putting the subtitles and the time i hear sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one <coughs> hmm. I'm guessing we're going to meet Emma here again because she said like she's going to come here. What? Oh. Hmm. Oh boy, what the hell is happening here? Delji. Oh no, wait, is he dead or something? Oh my god, yeah. Oh god, so that's... Finally returned. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, literally, he was born here. Ah, uh. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is going to the story is going to progress in two parts, I'm guessing. <clears throat> one part is <clears throat> Alfonso's story and one part is um Leon's story. And I'm guessing sometime in the future they're going to meet at a, like you know at like a crossroad. So yeah. Okay, let's watch. Ah, Black Knight. Hmm. How will we enter the... <laughs> yeah, just... Oh, yeah. Wait, what? All right. Okay, slap him. Okay. <laughs> Hmm, okay. <laughs> oh no. <clears throat> Yulio. Hmm. Oh, this. Oh damn, I'm feeling like maybe the sword has something within it. Oh no. Oh no, yeah, I feel like this is like a similar thing that happened. Like just like how the doll had the horror in it. Maybe the sword also has like a horror in it or something. Oh 
Oh, it was his son. Okay. Oh my god. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a horror. It's taking advantage of his, like, you know, emotional. Oh boy. Oh, great. Yeah. Hmm. Herman is here. <clears throat> hmm. I'm pretty sure he's a horror now. <laughs> hmm. Oh boy, yeah. <clears throat> <coughs> Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Blue cheese. It's a sample. What the? Um. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> ah. Okay, I will go with the cheese, you know. All right, here she is, Emma. <laughs> Ah, okay. Up. Oh, sorry about that. Oh my God, my. Okay. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> um. What's happening here? <laughs> you didn't know the boy. <laughs> Oh, my God. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> true. So true. Wait, what? I don't think that... <clears throat> Ah. <clears throat> hmm. Municipal Council. <laughs> A little while ago. Head of the arm. Whoa! Looks like a Dulahan or something. <laughs> Black Knight. Did the knighthood within the castle. 
Ha, okay. Creepy and terrifying. Brandon the news is Hmm. Oh. Oh boy. Yeah, he's like, what is he even saying? Like, his son has. Oh god. Because he's a horror now. Yeah, oh, it's happening. Oof. Okay, so he's still completely not affected by the horror. I'm guessing it's still in within him. It's kind of like, you know, just um, like uh, bothering him and like, you know. Oh, boy. Ah, here we go. Oh. Oh boy. Well. What? Hmm. Oh, Leon is here. Here you go. Money. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, obviously. Wait, what? Oh. So I'm guessing uh, that person, yeah, the that guy. Uh, the blacksmith, he took him in. Oh. Yep, there you go. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, this guy said G, okay. Okay, well... <laughs> oh. 
But he doesn't have any money. <laughs> so what he's going to do? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's not what he's saying. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, whenever the dad, the whole conversation about dad is coming up, he's just... Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Boy. Yeah, he's, I hope he tells, uh, yeah, he's going to tell him. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they will be able to, they'll be able to, here we go. Yeah, okay, they, they'll be able to understand what's happening. To other shops. Okay, I'm sorry about that, like my PC is lagging nowadays, little. Yep. Okay, so can he use the thing over here as well? Okay, yep, yeah, there you go. Oh. oh boy. <clears throat> oh boy. Oh, there you go. Whoa, what the, what type of a special attack is that? It's like a blacksmith and swordsman. Wow. You know what? This is like a very cool um, concept for a you know, video game character. Like, you know, you're a blacksmith and you can, you fight as well. You make your sword and fight. <laughs> Oh no. Oh. Ah. Oh. Damn, it's huge. Oh. Wow. Yeah, oh boy.
Yeah. <sighs> oh, wait, shit. Soldier hmm. tests. Hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. Happened to be screaming and all right. Yeah, to make them horrors. Great. So yeah, we need to get this black knight, I'm guessing. He is probably the Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> yep, they're all horrors. Like, they're like producing horrors over here. Yeah, Mendoza's like the main mastermind behind. I'm guessing the Black Knight is probably... Oh boy. Hmm. Obviously, he's a horror. Okay, well. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, nothing much happened this episode. It was just like, you know, we got um, introduced to the different thing that's happening in this place. You know, the knighthood of the black or the uh, dark knight, as we know. Um, the, the, the big guy was like the, the dark knight or something. It said something about like that, like, and yeah, all those stuff. And, and we kind of got a little story about another unfortunate victim of the horror. All right. <clears throat> okay, that's the end. Oh, okay, this episode. Um, as I said, this episode, like, you know, nothing major happened. We kind of got introduced to the whole system of, like, you know, the uh, Dark Knighthood or whatever it was called. And a little story about a certain blacksmith and you know how he got affected by a horror due to his son's death now in this episode here um we see them like you know in uh santa Bart, i think that was the name of this place yeah uh them coming and arriving in this place <laughs> leon is like yeah all your money is with me because if I give it to you, you're going to you know, do weird stuff with it. So, yeah, let me just hold on to it. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, boy. And uh, Ehrman 
just like he's on his way with no money nothing <laughs> okay but um this guy here this blacksmith his son was one of the soldiers and he died now there's one thing that i'm thinking now um <clears throat> like by the end of the episode we got to know that the the different knights you know uh they get like you know they, they get taken to that room and horrors are implanted within them maybe the same thing also probably happened to the sun and uh, i don't know maybe the sun died after that and the horror within him it it got inside the sword that he had and that sword was brought to the blacksmith and the blacksmith like you know the, the horror within the sword then took control of the blacksmith is that what happened i'm guessing probably like that's where the horror came from like we already know like they're using like you know horrors to uh, implant them in different human beings turning them into horrors these soldiers half of them are horrors i'm guessing so probably something similar to happen to the sun and that's how you know like the horror got um stuck inside his sword or something i don't know but yeah okay so yeah like we see him in his in his place just looking at the sword and obviously like you know it was very apparent what was going to happen the horror came out it just got inside him and uh, yeah so now here's one thing um i'm guessing this you know this is how it worked in this uh, instance is that he had control of himself but the horror was also within him which you know like, like it was like a little uh, what do you call it like whenever people started read like you know referring to his son he had this he got this weird headache obviously that was like a side effect of the horror i'm guessing so he had like you know he knew what he was doing he had control of his body but there was like a part of him which was like you know infected by the horror and it was kind of coming out every night and ev like you know and and whenever like someone mentioned like a dad or son these type of words and um when he became a horror completely he just lost every like you know all sanity and just went out like asking people where his son is and like you know killing them so that's probably what was happening so it was like a little split personality something like that and i'm guessing as time would go on he would probably completely turn into a horror so like in this episode we saw he had his like you know sanity in time to time even after he got like you know infected by the horror but as time went goes on like you know if, if time went on like this and he was not killed in this episode uh it would i'm guessing it would slowly turn him into a complete horror or he would lose every you know uh he, he would lose his sanity he would lose control of his body the horror would become like the main main thing within him okay <clears throat> so yeah like um Ehrman runs into this guy and uh he I, I forgot his name the other kid you know the, the kid who was adopted by them and yeah the guy comes out and the guy's like oh it's everything's fine you know like the blacksmith let's go and talk with you all right um leon then uh meets uh, not meets but it's like you know going through the um the the the, the marketplace <laughs> and there's like these two weird girls <laughs> they're like yeah trying to <laughs> let him buy cheese and everything uh, and then like emma comes in and um emma here it kind of teases him and also like tells him something he's she's like um always you know like do not give in to your emotions i think that's what she says where is it okay here you go here on out unnecessary angers will blind you from important things there you go and um probably it would also make it an easy target for horrors to target him so she's like yeah grow up you know quickly <laughs> and yeah that was that okay um <clears throat> now here we see the 
Ehrman talking with the blacksmith and them talking about the black knight. Uh, okay, now I need to read this part again. The head of the army had died in an accident. I'm pretty sure everyone could guess what happened there. Um, after that, a new knight arrived to take his place. Okay. He looked impressive, black from head to toe. Okay, uh, the people in these parts called him the Black Knight. Okay, so he was the one who created the knighthood. Okay, I wonder who this Black Knight is. Is, is it that guy we saw in the end? Or is it someone completely different? Um, maybe. Who knows? But it's probably someone different, I'm guessing. I don't know. Oh, no, no, maybe, maybe he, it is the same guy who we saw in the end, you know, the one who was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, <coughs> I'm going to go out and deal with this. Mm. Okay, so, okay, so this guy, the man created the knighthood within the castle. A group of knights wearing black armor called the knighthood of black. To the army, they're creepy and terrifying. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, in order to strengthen the new system, they begun recruiting new soldiers and we know what's happening after they recruit the soldiers, you know, underground. Okay, separate from the knighthood? Yeah, they recruited able people from- Oh, wait! Oh, separate from the knighthood. Okay, this one I, I, I kind of missed while I was reacting. Oh, so they're recruiting people who are not part of the actual knighthood, but uh, uh, as soldiers i'm guessing all right okay okay yeah they recruited able people from all corners of the kingdom to be soldiers they said that if you passed all the real oh all the real combat tests, you can be knighted okay 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 that's what's happening real combat do they fight each other to death exactly as you say and listen to this that's not where the story ends Okay, yeah, the, then like the whole thing happens. You know, the, the kid goes away. And uh, yeah, all right. So then uh, obviously we can see like, you know, him coming outside and the horror is kind of affecting him. He goes asking people about, you know, asking soldiers about his son. And then like the soldiers aren't able to say anything and he consumes the soldiers. Okay, the next scene we see Leon uh, helping out a kid who probably stole something or something like that and um the other kid was also there the one who the blacksmith adopted he he tries to help him out but leon comes before after that and he just he's like yeah i'm going to pay for it and yeah and then the, the guy like you know that the kid took takes uh, leon with him and he's like oh you like you know helped us out you kind of reminded me of my past where i was also in the similar situation but the blacksmith you know the, the guy he helped me out he saved me and he gave me a place a family you know even his uh, son sergi i think that was his name he also accepted me and uh, yeah we are like a family now and uh, that's why uh, after like you know seeing that scene like i have to like you know thank you <laughs> and then <laughs> leon and um Armin meet inside the <laughs> You know, the, the, the meat together and then like you know, they were eating and everything and like continuously like you know the, the the talk about son and father was coming up and that like they were kind of squabbling a little bit friendly squabble between Erman and Leon but obviously this guy is affected by father or son like you know, whenever that type of conversation comes in he kind of overreacted and he's like sorry about that and yeah so now here when they they're leaving the place and uh, the kid comes out and he tells them everything like oh this happened you know my um okay where is it okay yeah about his son who was stationed there brother sergi is no longer here not here he took the test of knighthood and died okay so all right, so that makes sense. So basically, so he was the chosen one. He won after fighting all the soldiers. 
and he was the one who was made the knight obviously he was not made a knight a horror was put inside him that's what happened i'm guessing yeah or uh i don't know who knows no wait 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 they say he took the knighthood exam and died oh so no wait oh so he took the exam and he wasn't able to win i'm guessing and that's how he died is that what happened or did he win and after that he died no, I think okay, okay. I think okay. So he was not knighted. He he was probably one of the victims of the uh, battle. You know, in in the knighthood battle. Okay, that's probably what happened. So he was a soldier even when he died. Like he did not become a knight. Okay, okay. Let's continue. Like there's a few parts that I am actually, you know, I, I need to think a little bit more to understand what's happening. All right, the next scene. Um. We see um, the blacksmith, you know, him becoming a horror kind of, you know, talk, like asking people about his son and just killing them. And Leon and all of them comes in and uh, yeah, they start fighting. Okay, I'm, I have to say, I'm, <laughs> the, the, the character design of the horror was pretty impressive. You know, he has like a, a thing <laughs> where he makes a sword and fights. I was just saying like this, this seems like a very cool design for a video game character, you know, like. You have this like thing with you like a blacksmithing thing where you kind of make your own sword like you make upgrades on your sword and then fight with it <laughs> kind of looks cool you know the way he was doing it but anyways so yeah and uh, the dad uh Erman was like okay i'm going to deal take like you know control like i'm going to deal with this and obviously because you know like he's a dad and Erman is also a dad that's why like you know he probably urban thought that yeah i i will i will de definitely deal with this and i need to deal with this whole situation um <clears throat> so okay um the yeah then the fight fought like you know like urban was able to win and uh the blacksmith died so yeah, and he said like that strong emotions can crumble with the smallest of crack the people who are left behind should be thinking of what they can do from now on instead of bitterly thinking of what had passed yeah and you know like this this is the thing that the blacksmith did you know he he, he was like you know affected like you know like he, he probably let due to his emotions the horror probably affected him at that moment you know he was just sitting there staring at the sword and the sword you know affected him so it, it seems like you know very uh, what can i say heartless like you know if you hear about this like you know you're, you're basically saying someone uh like you know who has lost someone to not think about that person and move on with your life like if you think about it like that it seems a little bit heartless but especially in these situation when like horrors are involved that is something that i guess you need to do as soon like you know in this world because yeah like otherwise it's going to be a mess like for example here this guy that the kid he was you kind know, of sad about him so if somehow like there was a horror lurking around here somewhere he probably would have taken advantage of the situation and i'm guessing kind of tempted him and got inside of him and like, you know, like kind of possessed him this could have happened but yeah but, but you know but the kid kind of stands up and he's like yeah i'll move on like the thing that he says is very true you know like obviously like this is like you know someone um, people who die and everything they they like obviously you, you should like you know like be sad about them and think about them but don't let your you know like yourself stagnate and stop moving in your life uh thinking about that person because you uh, what can i say like you, you need to move on like that that's something that happened in the past you definitely you like you know you, you should respect them think about them but do not let uh you know like th th those feelings actually chain you to one place like that's basically what i'm guessing arman was telling at that moment and yeah like like obviously he's not tell telling him to like oh forget about him no that's not what he said he's saying like don't let it stagnate you move on with your life and obviously like you know like think about him and you know like 
whatever, pay respect to him, and go to the person's grave, give them offerings and everything. Like the, the, the things that you do, think about that person. But keep moving at the same time. And okay, now here's the thing. Now um, Emma comes in. She says that gives him new information. You can join the Black Knighthood by killing each other, right? Uh, okay, the winner has to go to a certain underground room prior to being knighted. Okay. All right. Um, there was a female castle servant who happened to hear screaming as she passed. Um, screaming. Save me! Don't come into my body. There you go. So yeah, that's what's happening here. So the people who are winning, uh, who are supposed to be so okay. So I do wonder, like, uh, did the guy, the the, the kid, the the son, Sergio. Did he die in the battle or did he win the battle, was supposed to be knighted, went to the underground chamber and that's when he, like, you know, the horror kind of possessed him and he died or something? I don't know. Is that what happened? Yeah, that's a question that I'm thinking about. But anyways, and then we shift to Mendoza. He's like, oh, what's, like, you know, like, it's like a factory that he made. Like, you know, he's like, oh, like, I'm choosing all the... Uh, people who are strong by this little test that we are having and they kind of putting horrors inside of them and the other guy i don't know we kind of saw him before in one one two episodes i think uh, the guy with the sword he comes in and he's like all right like one of those um horrors got defeated and a makai knight is involved and so uh, Mendoza's like, yeah, we need to take care of it. He's like, let me handle it. So I'm guessing in the next episode we'll probably, like, you know, get into a fight with him or something. So we'll see. So, yeah, that was it. That was my reaction to Garo Hono Hono Kokuin episode number 5 and 6. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll check them out. Yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of Garo Hono no Kokui. So until then, goodbye and have a nice day.